Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to an episode of A Quick Shot of Romance. I am Becky and joining me for this episode and this review is my favorite co-player, Leah. Hi, Hi Leah. Becky. Hi Becky. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I feel like we haven't talked in forever. It, well, we have talked, but it has been not as much lately. I mean, no. life has gotten kind of crazy for both of us. So, yeah, so much craziness. Mm -hmm. So on this episode, and Leah has so much to say, you guys, so we have to get into this. Um, on this episode, we are reviewing Dirty by mm -hmm. Kylie Scott. This is book one in the Dive Bar series, which is a spinoff from her Stage Dive series. Um we are supposed to be doing small town September. And initially we put this title up to vote, uh, when we were trying to figure out what book Leah and I were going to do for small town September. Mm -hmm. And every time this book was put up against another one, the other book never got any votes. Like a hundred percent. Everyone just kept saying, read this book, read this book. Yes. So, so we only put this one through, I think two rounds and we're like, yep, you just two of the five rounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just said, Hmm. Let's just do dirty. Everybody wants to hear what we have to say about it. So we're going to do it dirty. Um, mm -hmm. So we are doing Small Town September. However, this book play takes place in Cordeline. Cordeline? Cordeline. I'm going to get it. I actually Googled it and had them pronounce it. Pronounce anyway. it for you. Yeah. Cordeline, Idaho, which... I'm not sure I would classify as a small town. The population is 50,000 people, um, but they do have a large tourist summer home kind of draw. And lots of rock stars actually have vacation homes there, including Adam Levine. Anyway, I just wanted to share that little tidbit. <laughs> just wanted to talk about him. I love him. <laughs> I love him. I had a memory pop up in my Facebook the other day where the picture of him and his now wife Mm -hmm. where she he's naked and it's her hand coming up between his legs to shield his to business <clears throat> so hot it is hot i would shield his business um <laughs> no, you wouldn't no i wouldn't i'd let everyone see it uh <laughs> So the synopsis from Goodreads, love on the rocks. The last thing Vaughn Houston expects to find when he returns to his childhood home is a broken hearted bride in his shower, let alone the drama and chaos that come with her. Lydia Green doesn't know whether to scream or cry in a corner. Discovering the love of her life is having an affair on your wedding day is bad enough. Finding out it's with his best man is another thing altogether. Just when this runaway bride has nowhere left to turn, a handsome stranger offers her a broad, muscular shoulder to cry on. Vaughn is the exact opposite of the picture-perfect, respected businessman she's normally drawn to. This former musician turned bartender is rough around the edges and is facing his own crossroads. But Lydia's already tried Mr. Wright and discovered he's all wrong. Maybe it's time to give Mr. Wright now a chance. After all, what's wrong with getting dirty? Dirty is the first book in the Dive Bar series from best-selling author Kylie Scott. So this was released back in April 19th of 2016. Uh, would you say it holds up? I think it holds up. There wasn't anything that happened that I think was out of touch. Yeah, I don't feel like it dated itself or anything like that. It mm -hmm. felt on par. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a rock star, real-bodied heroine runaway bride found family temporary slash friends with benefits and it's a slow burn oh my god we're now into slow burn september we are steam level though once the steam happens oh yeah it's good it's very good so yeah so we have a 3.5 on that um okay leah let's talk point of view okay so this is a first person point of view in entirely the heroine's point of view. Just one. There is no, and honestly, the blurb is very misleading because the way it starts, you think <laughs> there's going to be both, but it's not. It is just her. But honestly, I have a, I have a hard time with this, but I didn't miss his in this time. I will say it. I wish, I wish we got it. 
but I was okay without it. And I don't say that very often. You don't. Um, and I think I was about 40 or 50% through and I was like, oh, shit, Lee is going to be so um, mad at me. And I was, I was like three chapters in and I texted you and I was like, what did you do? I know. And it's a slow burn too. Like I totally... I like ever, like every book I read this weekend has been a slow burn, and it's like I just need something like fast and dirty. I get it, fast and dirty for the win. Uh, the put out percentage of this book is a fifty three percent, so we are fifty three into to the fifty three percent into the book before there is on page business, mm -hmm. so, sexy business, sexy business. But there was uh, a lot of chemistry. Right. Well, okay. So let's just talk about their meet cute because it's pretty freaking <laughs> hilarious. And then we'll break down Lydia and we'll break down Vaughn. But the meet cute at the beginning of the book, I think it sets the tone for this whole series. Like it's, it's quirky. It's funny. It's a little unexpected. <laughs> well, cause they meet. So she has escaped her wedding. She has jumped over a fence climbed into a tiny bathroom window and is like sprawled out in the bathtub in her wedding dress he comes into the bathroom is naked and turns the water on and that's how they meet like she's wet and in her wedding naked. dress yeah and he's he's got a thing for the boobies he, he does have a thing like honestly he has conversation with just her boobs and he's like i just like them like, at least he admits it. He's like, I really just like them. It's kind of funny. And actually, so I think that what I really like about this from Kylie Scott is, so little Lydia is this one runaway bride. Mm -hmm. On her wedding day, someone sends her a video of her fiance, totally fucking the best man from the night before. Yeah. And she just runs. Yeah. She has to climb over a six foot fence, privacy fence to get away. She can't go out front because there's people. She does not want to be seen. She leaves her phone back in the room she was changing in. Playing. Still playing. Playing the video. And yep. she's stopped by the groom's niece. <laughs> wanting to know where she's going. Where are you going? And she's like, it's yeah. a game. Don't tell anyone you saw me. <laughs> And then, so she, once she gets over that fence, the way that Kylie Scott describes go, her coming through the window, like it is a small bathroom like window. She has to squeeze through. Yeah, it's so funny. And I think that's one of the things, I think it's really well in descriptive of who, uh, how Kylie Scott writes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it is just done so well, so well. Um because you, she's because you've been there you've as you know a bigger lady you've crawled through some small things and moments and you know but the thing is that i like too though is she's very descriptive in her in her writing but she's not overly descriptive like she doesn't describe things that are pointless like the black shirt with three buttons down the front like nobody gives a fuck about how many buttons you have on your shirt like she yeah. describes like the squeeze of like her boobs, like as she's trying to squeeze through this window, like she gives you accurate descriptions that like, but it makes you picture it that much more. And like when he's talking about her boobs, like you could picture like his, like the way he sees them, yeah, which is just really funny. So, and there's this moment where the groom's family shows up on the doorstep. She's still kind of, she's only at this point in her, corset and Kremlin. she is no longer in the wedding gown because it's hanging well, she in the has, bathroom i think she has a shirt of his on at does this she point. i think she has a shirt on at this point yeah but and it's like just on like it's not buttoned <laughs> like it's just there it's just on and the family shows up on the doorstep and mm -hmm. it's a whole who a whole to do yeah and the police the sheriff shows up and she punches the ex <laughs> in the face Jeez. and he pleads <laughs> it's fantastic it's but so good the, and the, this isn't like the first like two chapters like we're not even far to the book no yet. the setup of this book was great like and i know mm -hmm. that in a it's it's a book one and there really is a lot of world building to do even though it's a spinoff of another series that other series does not take place in this small town so mm -hmm. 
there is some world building that has to happen, but the way that they do it is so funny. It is so funny. It is really funny. Um, I really connected with Lydia. Just my heart broke for her. She just wants to belong somewhere to something. Mm-hmm. Well, her parents just, are not even at her wedding. Her parents are not even at her wedding. No. And I think part of it too, she feels so lost. Like she was like an afterthought to her parents. And so like she moves to this small town and she, she clings, clings to this reality that like she thinks she needs. And she finds out that that was all a lie. And her reality was not what she needed at all. Like, but then she meets Vaughn and, and she really blossoms like he he is part of that but it's the fact that like his sister pulls her in and the guys at the bar pull her in like Vaughn Vaughn is there and helpful and like a big part of it but the fact that his friend group like pull her out of like her shell and they are truly the ones that allow Lydia to grow and allow Lydia to discover who she is and I think that's the best thing like yes Vaughn like makes a difference in that but he's almost like an afterthought in like her becoming who she's supposed to be well she just kind of and you're right it she blossoms she gets a backbone Mm -hmm. she is likes what she's doing and where she's at um there's just she's funny when Mm -hmm. you know she has the drinks there's a scene that happens in the bar and Eric really screwed up. Who's one of the owners of the bar mm-hmm. and all the girls, a waitress has quit the bar and they're short a waitress and Lydia steps in to help and to get back at Eric for sleeping with the waitress that quit and left them shorthanded. They all leave him to work the bar basically by himself. Oh yeah. And they all sit back at Vaughn's house and get drunk. And well, and like the the guys are outside doing their thing. The girls are inside doing their thing. Like they're separate entities. Like there's no interaction between the two, which I thought was nice too. Like they, like these groups, like understood, like the girls need their time and the guys need their time. But (laughs) Eric is just stuck. And Eric is stuck. So let's talk about Vaughn a little bit. Okay. He has a lot of baggage. He does. Like there's been a lot that has happened in his life and he he almost he just shoves it down like he doesn't he doesn't deal with any of it like his parents have passed away and he has not come back to the house that like he owns because like his parents aren't there his band has imploded but and he's like running away because he doesn't know what to do and he just he's lost too and I think that's a big a big factor in this book it's like they're both like these lost people who are trying to figure their their new place in the world yeah they're not sure who they are or what they're going on you know like you said Vaughn's band has broken up this was his band from high school Mm -hmm. as soon as they graduated high school they left and went to Los Angeles they've had some mild success but two of the members of the band have decided to break apart and try solo careers um leaving him kind of not sure where he's going or what he's doing and they have this Mm -hmm. loose connection to some people that are um also from the same small town that are also from the town in Idaho that have become huge success. And that's the stage dive books of those friends and Vaughn's loosely connected to them. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though this is a slow burn, like you said, this book does have a lot of chemistry on the pages. Um, Mm -hmm. But So the book uh, does do a lot of world building, though, and set up for the next books. So we don't know how much we really get to know and feel the couple's chemistry. Um, But I felt like we got a good idea that they did belong together. I don't I don't feel like we were missing out on anything because, yes, there was a lot of world building, but there wasn't ever a moment where Lydia was just in the background watching like she was fully immersed in the world that was created. She like the bar, like is this, cause I mean, it's the dive bar series. So like the bar is a big factor, but anything like, she, but she was immersed in the bar. Like she's making decisions, like how to become like part of this family that they have created. Like she's immersed in all of it. So yes, it's world building, but you 
you never get a moment without her. And I think it works really well. And again, like that first person perspective where it is just her, which again, I dislike most of the time, but I think it worked this time because I wanted Vaughn's like mental insight, but at the same time, I didn't need it. And I didn't miss it because he, he was on like, he, I hate to say he's an afterthought, but like he, she didn't make any decisions based on what he was doing. Like he said that he was going to go back to LA and she's like, fine, if that's what you want to do, that's your choice. Like I'm creating this new life in this town with these people, because this is what I want to do. And if you're going to go, then go. Yeah, she doesn't try to tie him down. She doesn't try to, I mean, she's sad that he's going to go back to LA because he has a mm-hmm. chance to work with some musicians. He, She's sad about it, but she never is like, you have to stay here. You have to be with me. She's very clear. Like, I understand that this is my path and that is your path. And mm-hmm. this is where we break. Um, Vaughn, though, he falls for her pretty hard. He is super, not just to her boobs, but to everything about her. Mm -hmm. He's super attracted to her. And there's this moment where there's this really funny scene. She's at the bar. Everything is closed up. And the bartender, Eric, who is the bar whore, he's done some bad things. I don't want to give anything Mm -hmm. away there. Um, He's not necessarily a lovable kind of guy. Um, He starts making mixed cocktails for Mm -hmm. Lydia and she gets pretty drunk and she gets brought home and at this point she and Vaughn have had a little bit of a a fight and they he's been silent like he went radio silent on her or no maybe he did he yeah no this was like day. this is what causes the radio silence she had to get a ride no no they were already on radio silence because she was getting a ride from Boyd who works in the Right. in the kitchen and the only reason she stayed to hang out with eric was because boyd was not done so like vaughn was already radio silent on her and then this happened and it made it worse because he's being an asshat well he has a super hair trigger and is super jealous and mm-hmm. i kind of wanted to dick punch him when he accuses her of sex with the bar whore eric like, oh yeah it's bad oh it's and very bad. um there's actually, though, a really funny line comes out of this mm-hmm. where she, um, I just love the line, I will not fall victim to your devil dick and your demon tongue. And when he tells her the next morning that he's writing a song titled The Devil Dick and the Demon Tongue, I about <laughs> wanted to laugh. Um, and when she asks some, him. <laughs> there are some really funny quotes in this book, because like you have one here where she's talking about her boobs and she's like these things Vaughn, the baby feeders and pillows of sin yes you're staring at them again again um and just what Vaughn um and then when she asks him to tell her a story and he creates the fairy tale of the prince is prince bag of dicks uh-huh like there's and a not lydia <laughs> Not Lydia. Not Lydia. Princess, Princess not Lydia with In Prince, Prince of, bag, of Prince dicks. bag of Dicks. Yeah. Um, and Vaughn's called a music, but only he only sees success as being part of a successful band. Mm-hmm. Because there's a really great scene where he's giving some guitar lessons to some of the local children. And I mean, he's they're enthralled with him. And even the mm-hmm. owner of the music store is like, he has a talent. Um And Lydia says to him, when something's no longer working, changing your plan is not giving up. That is not failure. Vaughn doesn't see it like that. Well, and like his, his big motivation, because he even like Andre is the shop owner and he even says like, you should come and do this. And Vaughn makes a comment about how like the, the money, it's about the money. And like Lydia wants, like you can tell like in the, her reactions, like she wants to scream at him and be like, the money shouldn't be a factor, right? Like it's not about the money. It's about the fact that you are loving what you do. Like you are enjoying being there. Like, and the money is, yeah, the money's great, but what do you get out of it aside from the money? Like, why are you doing this if just for the money? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's ask our questions here. Um, Leah, did you like this book? I did like this book, honestly, going into it being only in one person's point of view was a super, super big negative for me. 
as we all know, but I really did end up liking it. And now I have to read the other ones. They're so good. You should totally read the other ones. Um, I, I love Kylie I did, Scott and I'm sort I of obsessed on with hold at the library. There you go. I love Kylie Scott. I'm sort of obsessed with her famous normal books. I mean, she just had one out called fake. Um, that's a Hollywood oh, norm. Yeah. Yes, you like that one a lot. I did. I just, I love Kylie Scott. I think she writes a great book. Um, who would typically like this book? Um, if you're looking for a low dose of rom-com because with a low dose of angst built in, cause it was funny, but it wasn't overtly funny. It wasn't like that over the top chaotic, funny, like there's like really funny one-liners like mixed throughout. And I think the subtle like humor was the best. It does have a subtle humor, a smart humor, almost to mm -hmm. say that it's not just quirky laugh out loud moments. It's witty it's banter. So, yeah. It's not in your face, like ridiculousness. Like it's no. subtle, like pillows of sin. Pillows of sin. Um, yeah. If you like Kristen Callahan's VIP series, or if you're a fan of small town romance or friend groups, I think you would really enjoy this series and this book. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I really love them. Would you recommend this book, Leah? I would recommend this book. It was a sleeper surprise for me. Yeah, I recommend this all the time when people are like, oh, you like rock stars? I'm like, yes, but if you're not sure if you like rock star romance, start with the Dive Bar series mm -hmm. because it's not as crazy. It's not the he cheated or tons of groupies. It's, it gets, it kind of wets your palate to the rock star romance mm -hmm. and they, I do well, love and they a like allude romance. to what Bond was like in his like high rock, like rock star heyday, but like yeah. he doesn't come off that way in this no. book. Nope. I really like it. It's really well done. I it highly, Even highly being recommend it. Just one, one person's point of view. It was very good. <laughs> you guys, I'll never live this down. I will always. I mean, you, sh you should know better, but honestly, like. But it was good. It was it was definitely worth the read. And like I said, I did put the other two books in this series on hold at the library because I have to read them now. But Eric's book is an Eric's per perspective. So I am curious how that one will go. Well, there we go. Anyway, <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us for this quick shot of romance. Until next time. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.